Polyphone Mix 2 has been with me for weeks now and in this video I'll be sharing my detailed experience of this device with you. After watching this video, one thing is certain, you are either going to like this device or hate it depending on the class of smartphone user you belong, so don't go away. Hello guys, my name is Steve from Dora Africa and this is my review of the Olephone Mix 2. Unlike the Olephone Mix 1 which took its design aesthetics from the Xiaomi Mi Mix, the design and feel of the Olephone Mix 2 is completely inspired by the more premium Samsung Galaxy S8. The device features a 5.7 inch full vision display built into an all plastic finishing. Above the display there is a 5 megapixel selfie camera, an LED flash, the cord speaker grill and some sensors. On the right hand side there is the power button and the volume rocker while only the 3.5mm audio jack sit above the device. Below the phone is the last speaker grid, a USB 2.0 port and a microphone with some notable network antenna straps below and above the device. At the back, you get a dual refacing camera hosting a 13 megapixel and 2 megapixel sensor along with a single LED flash. There is a red fingerprint sensor and Ulephone branding below the camera while the 3000mAh battery SIM cards and memory slots are hidden underneath the removable back panel. As for build quality, well, on one hand, the Mix 2 feels very premium and comfortable to hold. Despite having a removable back panel, attempting to bend the device produces no cracking and shattering at all, which is a big plus to 11. On the other hand, the device feels very plastic and heavy in the hand. The build is completely plastic, not even a metal frame is used and Ulephone should have still put in more effort to reduce the overall weight of the device. So let's go over it again. The display on this device is a 5.7 inch IPS HD Plus display. It has 720 by 1440 pixel resolution, resulting into about 280 ppi. All four bezels around the screen are kept very minimal. The IPS panel supports 5 fingers touch per time. The display is gorgeous and bright enough for both indoor and outdoor use. When using the device indoor, I tend to easily forget that I'm using a sub $100 smartphone due to its color reproduction. During outdoor use and sometimes under direct sunlight use, the device struggles to produce enough brightness needs to combat the bright rays coming from the sun. But trust me, nothing to complain about at all. Just tilt the device a little and you are good to go. Viewing angles are very okay also. Icons and text are sharp and it's no pain at all looking at the device from different angles. In the heart of the device there is a quad core MediaTek MT6737 processor clocked at 1.3 GHz and Mali T720 GPU. You also get a 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB internal storage. As mentioned before, the device has got a stock Android 7.0 Nougat without any separate customization which also means user will be getting all Google goodies preloaded. Now combining the processor and stock Android 7.0 on the Mix 2 helped the device to be fluid most of the times. All apps loading was ok and stable. Memory management was also great. The 2 gb of RAM was able to give me smooth multitasking between 3 to 5 apps and screen splitting feature of Android 7.0 is also in place. Out of the 16 GB internal storage, almost 6 GB was already preoccupied out of the box and before I could finish running all my tests, the smartphone was already complaining of low storage. So if you plan on getting this device, then you might want to make arrangement for an external SD card. If you love playing with gestures on your Android smartphones, then this device is for you. From standby, you can double tap to wake, slide up to unlock, paint E for browser, paint E for camera, and so on. You can even choose what you want the smartphone to do after painting any of the above options. As for the full screen display, user can also select apps that should or should not run in full screen. The red fingerprint scanner was a trouble locating at first. But after spending some days with the device, I became very comfortable with it. 
Now, while unlocking the device was not as fast as I expected, I love the fact that the sensor can be used not just to unlock the device, but also as a return navigation key to pause or play music and videos, answer calls, take photos, and can even be used to access recent app screen. Whoa, too many functions, right? Seriously, I find the rear fingerprint scanner to be so useful. As for connectivity, the Mix 2 provides room for dual nano SIM with support for 4G LTE speed. Network reception is great and I could easily stream YouTube HD videos without unnecessary buffering. Also making and receiving phone calls with the Ulefon Mix 2 was not an issue at all. I could hear my callers clearly well as much as they could hear me. In summary, Ulefon did the best to harmonize the hardware and software of the Mix 2 for optimum performance. But I was expecting a bit more from the software department considering the fact that it is stock Android 7.0. For reasons unknown to me, I could still notice few lags and stutters here and there especially when pushing through some heavy apps. But don't forget, it's MediaTek MT6737 processor here. The camera department of the Mix 2 is where I personally think that Ulefon did the nicest job on this device. Dual red camera setup is one of the most trending factors in the mobile arena currently. But trust me, most OEMs, especially those offering dual sensor on mid range to low end smartphones, are playing use cam. And if you doubt me, then please refer to my review on the Lego T5C smartphone. Generally, I would always recommend folks buying low end phones not to go for a smartphone with dual red camera setup. But not until I got the Ulefon Mix 2, then I realized that there are low-end smartphones with dual camera setups that really works. At the price of just $99, I'm not going to tell you how bright and sharp the camera on this device is. One thing that interests me the most is the depth of field and bokeh effect attainable by the secondary sensor. Even when capturing object on motion, the bokeh effect is still applicable. All sound and multimedia outputs are passed through a single loudspeaker sitting at the base of the smartphone. The speaker is loud and fairly rich in sound quality. The only issue I had is with the placement. I discovered that when watching a movie or playing a game in horizontal mode, I could easily get the speaker more food with my fingers. This is a singular problem common to all smartphones with base speakers and until we start getting blasting to our front facing speakers like those on the Infinix Hot 5 or Google Pixel 2, then the problem will still continue. So as for the battery, you are getting a 3300mAh battery with the Mix 2. Generally, having a smartphone with 3300mAh in 2018 won't give you that much excitement and of course, Battery milliamp count shouldn't on its own make any user excited. Although we all know that the higher the number, the better, but higher milliamp count does not always translate into higher real life performance. Looping a HD movie at 100% volume and brightness for about 2 hours and 20 minutes with background data turned on brought the device to 66% from 100%. Running further heavy tests such as benchmarks, gaming, web browsing and some video shooting for another 3 hours and 32 minutes brought the device to 15%. So heavy users can get up to 6 hours of continuous on-screen usage while most moderate users should be able to get a full day of use. However, when you run out of battery, it takes between 2-3 to three hours to fully refill the battery. The reason for this is partly due to the lack of fast charging support and the fact that Ulefon only bundled a 1A charger with the Mix 2. So will I recommend anyone to buy this phone? Yes, yes and yes and I will do that again and again. If not for the all plastic built and the little extra weight, the Ulefon Mix 2 is perfect at its price. At just $99, you are getting a gorgeous display dual red cameras that truly work and a multifunctional fingerprint scanner. So I had initially told you that by the end of this video you are either going to like or hate this device and now that the show is over, please use the comment section below to share your views with me and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.